what a pleasure it is for me today to introduce my friend of many, many, many years and author extraordinaire, Mr. Jeff Harding. Jeff has been a licensed battlefield guide at the Gettysburg National Military Park 22 years. I've known him <laughs> as long as that. And he was a retired, he is, I should say, he is a retired uh, employee from the United States Naval Department after 33 years of service. He's in his command hall of fame there. He's a leadership consultant, an author, a uh, historian extraordinaire. And he's the author of a brand new book, which we're going to talk about because we're going to host Jeff at Sacred Trust, which we co-sponsor the Gettysburg Foundation and the Gettysburg National Military Park on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 2022. We're going to have 18 speakers over the anniversary of the battle, and Jeff is going to be one of them on July 1st, 2022, about his brand new book. So, Jeff, why don't you tell us about the title uh, and subject of your new book, if you would? Sure. Well, first of all, Wayne, thanks for having me uh, for this little segment. And of course, I really appreciate the invitation to be part of the Sacred Trust. That's it's quite an honor. So thank you. Uh, my book, Gettysburg's Lost Love Story, The Ill-Fated Romance of General John Reynolds and Kate Hewitt. And um, that's that's the title. And you're going to have all you can uh, take on John Reynolds and Kate Hewitt by the time you're through. But uh, we solved the riddle, uh, the mystery that lingered with regard to Kate's ultimate fate. And uh, we filled in a lot of blanks with regard to her time before she met John. And the book presents a dual biography format. So you'll have John Reynolds' story as well. And we delve into some things there that uh, had been touched upon by others, but a little more deep uh, here in my book to give you some context for their relationship. And of course, it's no it's no coincidence since the, the book highlights Major General John Fulton Reynolds of the Union Army, who was killed on July 1st, 1863, that you're speaking on July 1st, 1863 <laughs> at Sacred Trust, and also covering his fiance Catherine uh, M. Hewitt. So, Jeff, how did you learn about this romance and story between Major General John Reynolds of the Union Army and Catherine M. Hewitt? So Wayne, years ago, I mean, this goes back to before I started guiding over 22 years ago, I had learned of their story and the fact that, you know, he's, of course, killed on the first day and remains are examined and his West Point ring is missing and he's wearing a ring that says, dear Kate on the inside, and there's quite a mystery, right? And, and who's Kate? Well, she introduces herself to the family as remains are brought back to where his sister is living in Philadelphia. And Kate Hewitt shows up, this mystery woman, and there was a secret engagement and she had made a promise to him she would enter a religious life if it were to be killed during the war. And, and that she does. She begins that process uh, not too long after his death. And I knew that much. But I was actually working on another project uh, about John Reynolds and his brother, William, the naval officer. And as I went back to uh, working on John a little bit, I wanted to highlight this, this story. And I realized there were a lot of uh, open ends to it, if you will. Some things that remained unresolved. So I started digging into it at that point. So what is the number one thing? I mean, I know there's a lot of things you want people to know about Catherine Hewitt, John Reynolds' fiance. And guess what, everybody? you got to buy the book and come and hear Jeff's lecture. And we're going to talk about how to get a hold of the book here in a minute. But, uh, Jeff, what's one thing you'd like people to, to know about Catherine Hewitt that maybe is an unusual item or something that means a lot uh, from you for them to know about her? Absolutely. Um, well, you know, it's always been the tragedy is the focus, isn't it? and that deserves all the focus it gets and more. But to me, the more I learned about Catherine Hewitt, uh, the different aspects of her life, the story of her perseverance is the one that I want people to understand. I want people to become familiar with, as I did through my research. It's, uh, it's really an incredible story. Uh, the young lady is knocked to the, the, the mat many times over. Uh, she's a female Rocky, if you will. Uh, from the 19th century. I mean, one time after another, she's knocked down, whether it's to do with uh, being an orphan, uh, her, uh, I'll call it misadventure in California, uh, John being killed and enduring a terrible illness, and even her experience with the Daughters of Charity. But every time, without fail, she manages to stand up and deal with it. So, story of incredible perseverance. And, I, you know, I think that a lot of people don't know that, and you just mentioned that, you, you know, she had his permission to join the convent. You just mentioned that. 
but her time in the convent, she goes what you and I would call missing. So th this story for over a um, hundred years, 130, 140 years, this story has not been known what her ultimate fate really was. And you're the first person to solve that mystery. What happened to her? How did you discover that? What were the steps, I guess? Yeah, well, show, you discovered that. And this is a part where I always uh, want to share the credit with my research associate, Mary Pitkin, an unbelievably skilled genealogist who I reached out to. We had uh, become friends uh, in doing some prior research uh, that I was involved in with regard to uh, one aspect to the battle. And I reached out to Mary and when I started digging into uh, trying to find Kate. And Mary was uh, very, very helpful. And she's the one that located a genealogy tree, if you will, on uh, online. And sure enough, there was mention in there of a Catherine Hewitt that had once been uh, part of the Daughters of Charity uh, in this particular family. And sure enough, uh, that is how she was overlooked. Uh, she did indeed disappear, if you will. She was with the Daughters of Charity for three years, ended up on a mission in Albany, New York, and um, left the Daughters of Charity community uh, and ended up teaching in Albany for a while. And that much was known. But then uh, there was this uncertainty as to whatever happened to her. And of course, the, all of this is covered in great detail in the book. And as you say, when folks buy the book, they'll, they'll realize that uh, this is this is an amazing story. And uh, we found her, and even to the point of knowing where she's buried, up in Manans, New York, at St. Agnes. So this is all, you know, this research really, in my mind, is great, Jeff. It's all new research. You've got newly discovered sources in there. You've got unpublished sources, newly digitized sources uh, for your book. And I just think it's a, a wonderful puzzle solved after many, many years. And what a great and interesting story. Now, where can you buy the book? And I guess I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to cu cut in on this because you can get the book at the uh, Gettysburg National Military Park Visitor Center bookstore. You can get it online at the Gettysburg National Military Park Visitor Center bookstore online. We'll make it easy to get a link to go to that. You can go into the bookstore and buy it. And why would you want to buy it there? Because you're supporting the Gettysburg National Military Park, the Gettysburg Foundation, which is the Gettysburg National Military Park's partner, as well as you can get a signed copy from you. So these are reasons to purchase it uh, through uh, us, so to speak, through the National Park Services uh, bookstore and the website there at the, main, at the main visitor center. We'll make sure we get up a link and we get it to where people can get it. Last but not least, now that you've got you've done tremendous research on all different parts of the Gettysburg battlefield. Do you have a favorite spot at Gettysburg or forget, you know, forget about all this other great stuff that you've done. But what's like Jeff Harding's, <laughs> you know, uh, what's Jeff Harding's spot that he would he loves? Now, I have to tell you, um, stop one on the battlefield tour where Reynolds was killed. Uh, I guess odd as that might seem, because that's a tragedy. But uh, that spot is where when I have people on tour that I can first connect with them in terms of the human interest aspect. And for me, it's all about the human interest. Uh, the numbers are mind numbing. It's a huge battle, right? How do you get your mind around 163,000 troops today? That'd be a million and a half if we had that same battle today, you know, percentage wise of the population. So you get to that through these stories that people can understand. They can relate to the human interest aspect. So that is absolutely the first day's battlefield right there, stop one. And that's really where this story starts, uh, is my favorite spot. Well, Jeff, I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming out to see us on July 1st. Everyone, all the listeners, get a hold of this book at the Gettysburg National Military Park Visitor Center. We'll make it easy and get a link up. We're looking forward to hosting you for your talk. It's going to be brand new information and we're, we're going to be really happy to see you on July 1st, 2022, for the Sacred Trust Talks, sponsored by the Gettysburg Foundation, the, the Park Services Partner at the Gettysburg National Military Park, and the Eisenhower National Historic Site, and co-sponsored by the Gettysburg National Military Park, along with us. So, Jeff, we're looking forward to seeing you, and we thank you very much. Boy, I'm looking forward to it, Wayne, and thanks again for the honor. I appreciate it.